Group 25. First off, we have from Middleborough, Massachusetts, Brendan Clark. Next up, from Rochester, New York, we have standing at a hole five foot two inches, Catherine Ritzman. So in our problem, we have two uniform cylinders, each of weight 14 pounds and radius 5 inches, are connected by a belt as shown. Knowing that at the instant shown, the angular velocity of cylinder A is 30 radians per second counterclockwise, determine A, the time required for the angular velocity of cylinder A to be reduced to 5 radians per second, and B, the tension in the portion of belt between the two cylinders. Solve using the method of impulse momentum. First, we're going to start with our givens and our assumptions that we make on the problem. We know that our two cylinders have a weight of both 14 pounds and a radius of 5 inches, along with the known that the initial angular velocity of cylinder A is 30 radians per second. We also know that our final angular velocity of the cylinder will be 5 radians per second. And we have the assumption that the moment of inertia of a disc is I equals one half mR squared. After looking at our givens of our problem, we draw our free body and kinetic diagrams. Here we have our free body and kinetic diagrams for our disc A. We have our initial angular velocity moving counterclockwise of A, along with mg pulling down, a normal force going up, and the force of tension in the rope pulling down. This coming together to form our final moment of inertia about A. Next we look at our free body and kinetic diagrams for our disc B. We have our two tensions in our cords along with the weight pulling down of the disc as well as equaling our moment of inertia about B and the tangential velocity at B. After drawing our free body diagrams, we can see that the instantaneous center of B is at point C. So, the velocity of B is equal to the radius times the angular velocity of B. Also, the angular velocity of A is equal to the velocity of B divided by the radius, or just two times the angular velocity of B. So what we need to do is find the equation for tension, and to do that we have to take the moment about A using the input momentum here. And that implies that the moment of inertia times the angular velocity of A in the first state minus the tension times the radius is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular velocity of A in the second state. The final equation for tension to be mass times radius, all multiplied by the angular velocity of B in the first state minus the angular velocity of B in the second state. Now after finding the equation for tension, we're going to take the moment at point C. And that implies that the moment of inertia times the angular velocity of B in the first state times the mass times the radius times the regular velocity of B in the first state plus the tension that we just figured out times 2 times the radius minus the weight times the radius equals the moment of inertia times the angular velocity of B in the second state plus the mass times the radius times the angular velocity of B in the second state. After simplification and substituting in all the information that we already know, we come up with 2 times the tension minus the weight equals 3 over 2 times the mass times the radius almost like by the angular velocity of B in the second state minus the angular velocity of Now we're going to substitute our original tension equation to the moment equation we just determined. And that'll give us the equation for time, which is 7 halves times the radius and uh, acceleration of gravity multiplied by the angular velocity of B in the first state minus the angular velocity of B in the second state. So now we can plug our givens into the expression for the angular velocity of the disk of B to determine the angular velocity of the disk of B in the first state to be 15 radians per second and the angular velocity of B in the second state to be 2.5 radians per second. And finally, we can plug in all of our known values and all of our equations that we established to determine the amount of time that will take disk A to slow down from 30 radians per second to 5 radians per second. And as you can see here, once we plug in all of our values, we determine that it takes 0.566. So plugging in what we found so far, we get this equation here, and then canceling out what we can, we get our final tension in the cords to be 4 pounds. So that concludes um, our video and our problem, and we hope you really enjoyed our video and learned something.